up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Welcome to the Landmaster Known and Safe. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So I just got back, just got back from Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, uh, just back from the theaters. And I just, I had to make a video on this because I've been looking forward to this movie since the first one. And let me tell you, um, what an upgrade. Wow. I was floored. My jaw literally hit the floor the whole entire movie. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Well of an upgrade, more money put into this film, and uh, Reese, Reese Waterfield and Scott Chambers have done a fantastic job, um, and there's just so much to say about it. Now, before the movie even started, Reese Waterfield and Scott Chambers did preview uh, a little scene from Bambi the Reckoning, which they showed a 5, you know, 10, 15, 20 second clip from it, and I thought that was pretty cool, which we'll get into on another video. The number one thing that made this so watchable and so fluid, and I'm a big fan of the first Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 for, obviously, the um, funds that they had for it. It's a cheaper movie. It's, you know, it's not as expensive as this one. You know, they had a million dollars to spend for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. You know, we, we saw Scott Chambers as the new Christopher Robin, and I gotta say... He was absolutely amazing. The guy made me want to cry half this movie. The guy made me feel for him of all he's been through. And uh, he was just absolutely amazing. I think that was a great upgraded actor from the first film. And I think Scott Chambers was just, man, I, I think, man, he should have he should have been here the whole time. I mean, that's how happy I am with Scott Chambers as Christopher Robin. Can't go to any more details on what happened because I still want you guys to see this movie when you guys get a chance, but um, he killed it in this film. Not only is there a story to this, there's actual lore to this story with Pooh and Piglet and Owl and... T t I, mean, I mean, it's... it's it's uh, it's it's crazy. It's crazy how much lore that they go into and the depth of the relationship between, um, you know, there's a little bit of extra stuff that I can't say, but there is some other stuff that did happen in Christopher Robin's life and um, it has affected him over the years and the things, the twists, the turns, like there is a big twist to this film as well, which makes me more excited for the Pooverse. Yes, the Pooverse where every fairy tale child creature will be coming to life into the horror genre and we'll get into another video on that but the number one thing you need for this movie where are the funds going where is all the money going into besides your sets besides everything else it's your feral creatures because winnie the pooh the upgrades to some of these ma uh the makeup has been God, it's it's almost like I I was watching a real evil poo. The facial expressions in this makeup was just absolutely amazing. To see Al was fantastic. Tigger was probably as much as I think the most two. This this is what I'll tell you: the most two brutal characters in this film that went on a rampage was Tigger and Pooh. Okay, Tigger was just I you know every character every of one of these characters needs their moment and needs their kill moments and uh, Tigger had a bunch of them in this film. Winnie the Pooh is pretty much like the Terminator on steroids in this whole entire film, just never backing down, just moving forward and killing and killing and killing and the kills is a whole different story. Some kills were quick, some kills were slow, some kills made you really made you feel edgy, made you feel like on your on, you're on the edge of your seat like wishing that it was just not happening. Like that's how much it kind of creep me out it reminded me of terrifier 2 a lot where it got pretty pretty brutal it was i'm there are some kills in this film where you're like man and you and i started laughing just of how brutal it was and surprised that they actually went that far different types of kills jump scares and obviously when it comes to the different types of kills with different types of weapons or it's the creativity is off the charts for this it's it's absolutely insane i'm excited to see how much money this movie makes because they have so many more movies they are making 
And we have so much more to go over in the future of the Poovers, okay? And we are actually getting a Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 3. The news came out literally, I think, the second to the third day of this being in theaters. The third movie, we already know we're getting a trilogy of this. And then we're going to be moving on to other things. But I'm so excited. I'm so happy for... Reese Waterfield, I'm, I'm happy for Scott Chambers that they got together and really started to make these because I feel like, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, you, you just have to not be afraid to do things. And I think they've really taken that step forward from the first film to the second film. You know, uh, there are low budget movies out there that have gotten big. We, we have been going through the Terrifier universe, OK, where you know what? There are there are directors out there that are just going to make what they want to make. And, you know, some of it's fan funded. Some of them um, get rewarded in the process. But you never know what could happen when you make these things because they could become big. These could become big franchises. And I honestly think that Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey can become a big franchise. It's making me want to buy the merch. It's making me want to buy posters and frame them up it's it's making me love horror and i like how you know these directors especially for winnie the pooh blood and honey 2 they're not afraid to take chances they're not afraid to they're not they're, you know they care what the fans think and they want they want to make the fans happy and that's bringing that original genre of horror gore porn you name it that's what they want to bring to this franchise with a really good story I really hope that they put this in theaters a little bit longer. I just thought three days wasn't enough. And obviously it's during the week. So I know a lot of people can't get to the movies during the week because of work or whatever. And it's one time per day. So I hope that um, this kind of makes a little bit of money and they kind of move forward. And hopefully they can get this in theaters for another week or two and just have more people see it. Because I really don't want to spoil anything right now in case that happens. There's really nothing much more I could say because I don't want to spoil anything, but you're going to enjoy it. It's gory. It's disgusting. It's fun. And it's just a wild ride to be on. And it is a major, major upgrade from the first film in every way possible. I mean, it almost doesn't look like a low-budget movie because a million dollars is not much money. But because of the passion that Scott has and Reese Frank Waterfield has with this franchise, this creation, and much more movies they're going to make in the future, which we are going to see the Pooh-verse real soon. I want to thank those guys for taking a chance at this and making a lot of us fans happy. You're not going to make everybody happy, but let me tell you, you made me happy, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. So if this comes back out in theaters, go see it, because I think you're really going to enjoy it, and... Man, I, I think I need to go see some merch. Definitely check their site for some of the merch because uh, I'm, I'm getting a little interested now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey news or the Poohverse news because we're going to be doing all these films, all the reviews, and a lot of videos as well going forward. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Keep running. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.